you're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So we kind of predicted this last week here and in after the Paracast that a lot of you listeners would have comments with regard to David Stennett and his revelation, so to speak, that he has fundamentalist religious views that relate to UFOs, that UFOs are the spawn of the devil. And he reported that somebody claimed that if you recite what biblical texts to the UFO, I banish you in the name of Jesus, something like that. Yes. You know, it doesn't hurt me at all. You know, people have been banishing me for years and I just don't listen. Yeah, you're like a bad penny. <laughs> That's right. I never listened. But it predictably brought lots and lots of discussions over to our forums. So you go to forum.theparacast.com. Some people have gotten a little less than kind. We had a woman who came on the forums and called me a dick for my attitude towards Stinnett. She's no longer active in the forums, by the way. You know, I, I think the definition of that particular new poster was, uh, I think you call them a troll. Is that, is that correct? That's the reason for banning. Do you want to define troll in terms of message boards? It's somebody looking for a fight, basically. It's something that goes back, what, 20, 30 years to the original Usenet message forums online, where people would join forums just to start an argument. That's it. They're looking for trouble. They're trolling for trouble, and therefore they are trolls. And the way we handle them over at the PowerCast forums is we're shall we say, benevolent dictators. It's our form. But we give people freedom to express themselves. And if they get a little excessive, we warn them if they get too excessive and just won't give it up, we tell them to leave. We show them the door. We ban them. Ouch. I remember a former co-host of the show would call me every few months and say, would you please ban me from the forums? I'm afraid I'm going to say too much. Yeah. Personally, I've never had to go there, so... We all get angry, but sometimes a lot of these wacky messages come really late at night. So I get up in bed and I have nothing to do. I can't go back to sleep. So I pick up my iPhone and I start checking the messages. And that's where you get the really wacky ones. The ones that can be very abusive, argumentative. And at that point, I either want to go back to sleep or I get up, go to my main computer and start posting a response, which of course is a bad idea because I never get back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I guess note to self, don't engage in internet discourse late at night. I think that's where things happen. That's where it goes. So I guess we can hope that if we ever want to explore the subject of UFOs and demons again, we'll bring on a guest who can give us some give and take. We yes, we've had several suggestions in our thread, guest suggestions uh, for the Paracast. I've been in touch with Michael Heiser, I believe uh, is how you pronounce his name. He's been suggested by a number of uh, our forum posters, and he sent us uh, copies of part one and part two of his. Did you get copies, Gene? Probably, but don't ask me for the name of the book the, offhand. The Prodigy series, I think. I have not cracked it. Uh, I've, I've, it's like high up on my stack of uh, to read books. And we will get a better, uh, I think, more informed opinion about this particular, I don't know, point of view, if you will, on the phenomena or phenomenon. We'll go ahead and book him. He's, he's really tough to get a hold of, though. He has these automated answering programs that say, I'm a really busy guy and so many people contact me. Pardon me if I don't get back to you right away. And But much to his credit, he has answered my emails, even though it took him several weeks uh, to do so. And we got copies of his book or his uh, the first two of, of the series. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then get back to Michael. And in a few weeks or months, we'll have him gone. I just hope he doesn't take that much time between responses to questions. You know, you ask him a question, he sits there for three days. No, I have a, I have a feeling he is uh, quite Johnny on the spot with his opinions. That's good. We need that. We need the kind of people who, if you ask them a hard question, they'll respond. It may not be the response you want, but it'll be a response. Speaking of not getting the response you want, as you know, there have been ongoing attempts to force so-called disclosure in the UFO field. 
And the latest effort from Stephen Bassett is to get 100,000 signatures on a petition demanding UFO disclosure. And he wants to get this done by, what, mid-February? So it means he's going to have to rush pretty much to get it. Let's get real. I mean, this is just grandstanding. It's the ju- it's not the executive branch or the judicial branch that really would, you know, be the place to go. You need to go to the Congress of the United States to get any sort of action, any hearings, any sort of movement on this particular issue. Petitioning the White House is like trying to petition the Supreme Court. It's just uh, <laughs> it's just grandstanding. Well, we understand that. And then if it got to Congress, do you think Mitch McConnell and John Boehner are going to be at all interested in pursuing that? Right now, they're doing everything they can to, as they say, reverse the agenda of the Democratic President Obama. So they're so busy doing that. How are they going to have time to have hearings on UFOs? You know, they got to have hearings again, I guess, on repealing Obamacare or the immigration policies and all this other stuff. Consider that. Consider how serious this is and the chances that they would hold hearings. And if they did, what chance is there that it would be any better than the hearings back in the 60s that gave us the Condon Commission? Right. Oh, boy. I don't think there's a a proverbial snowball's chance in hell, I think, would be the uh, term. But. But I want to know, who is Stephen Bassett? Where did this guy come from? Prior to 1996, we know nothing about this guy. I mean, I've known Stephen for a number of years. And he's very very slippery, very Teflon. Nothing really sticks to him. And I'd like a... I'd like to to dive into his past and and really find out who this guy is because we really don't have any any sort of uh, background information on him prior to about fifteen twenty years ago. I mean, who is this guy? Now, supposedly he had some kind of management consulting experience. And, <laughs> supposedly, but, supposedly, but we don't have any records. We don't know what schools he went to. We don't even know, frankly, if the name he was known by then was Stephen Bassett. It's possible he changed the name. I'm not accusing him of anything. I understand. He's a nice guy. I've been in touch with him on and off over the years. I like like Stephen. He's he's uh, he's fun to hang out with. He's intellectually challenging. Uh, He's he's very glib. He's got an answer pretty much for any question that you throw at him. But, you know, his manner is very circuitous. Uh, He kind of goes around in circles a lot. And but does it with a lot of uh, savoir faire and uh, je ne sais quoi, I think would be the term. He's he's a mover and a shaker. But who is this guy? Now, there's one other thing to consider here. There have been published reports that he may have encountered some financial difficulties in continuing his work as a lobbyist. And I think there's some reporting and financial requirements he has to meet. I don't know if it's true. I'm not going to accuse him of anything. It's just a point. Speaking of points, we have back this week our friend Greg Bishop, and we're going to do kind of a 2014 roundup or just revisit a lot of the key issues in the UFO field. (laughs) This should be interesting. It would, because we always know that Greg is going to offer an entertaining presentation. He's going to... Not going to hold back anything. You know, well, he's uh, rather circumspect about what he says and how he says it. But, uh, you know, Stephen did spend, I think, a year or two out there in Greg's neck of the woods, actually within a, a mile or two of him. So uh, it should be interesting. Maybe they had, you know, weekly lunches over at a delicatessen or something. Nate and Al's in Beverly Hills. Who knows? But by the way, Nate and Al's is not paying for that segment and that advertising. In any case, we've got, and delivering a corned beef sandwich to us in Arizona wouldn't be a terribly convenient thing to do. Greg Bishop coming along with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. 
This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the Coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Talk to a sales rep at iWeb.com. Use the promo code TECHNIGHTOWL for a special discount. Hi, John Hubner from Midas Resources. Are you tired of watching your hard-earned assets dwindle away? As government spending is out of hand and the Federal Reserve is creating in excess of $20 billion a week, are you tired of stockbrokers gambling away your hard-earned money? Is this market a setup for a crash greater than 1987? Too many of today's policies resemble those that led to the collapse of 1929. This is John Hubner, and that was me in 2007. And we all know what happened when the subprime credit bubble burst. By March 2009, the dollar lost 50% of its value. The entire U.S. banking system was on the verge of collapsing. Like all financial problems of the past, is history about to repeat itself? Call me, John Hubner, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 129, before it's too late to protect yourself. Will the oncoming catastrophe take all private IRAs, 401ks with it? There is a way to protect your hard-earned assets. Call me, John Hubner, at 1-800-686. 2237 extension 129. Hi, this is Steve Sanchez, and based on a recent study, it was found that 57 million Americans had legal issues over the last 12 months, but only 60% of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer. Why? In a nutshell, affordability. While my friends at Legal Shield have created a solution that can help you not if, but when you need an attorney. For as little as $17 per month, Legal Shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter how serious or trivial. For over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Results will vary from case to case. A little over a year ago, I began to do a lot of research into why, even though I had a pretty good-sized meal, that I was still starving. And my research led me to a well-known fact that most of the soils that we grow our crops on here in the United States and across the industrialized world are almost completely depleted of almost all of the key minerals and trace elements that our bodies need to rebuild themselves, fight off cancer, and be healthy. I then searched out the best vitamin and mineral company out there and discovered Longevity. The Longevity products are designed to give you the real nutrition you need, and once you've got that, you don't have to eat as much to be satisfied. I've lost 37 pounds in two months simply getting the vitamins and minerals I need. Check it out for yourself. It's incredible. Go to InfoWarsTeam.com today and order your first canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine Complete Multivitamin Mineral Complex Dietary Supplement. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So we're joined now by the one and only Greg Bishop. And the reason he's the only Greg Bishop is because once they built him, they threw away the mold. Is that right, Greg? I think so. There's uh, Since I've been online, there's like three or four other Greg Bishops. One's like a dad advocate. One's a former football player for the New York Jets. And they're like, there's another guy that's a magician or something. So there's plenty of them, but only one me. Actually, there are other people named Gene Steinberg, believe it or not. What do they do? Well, I don't know, um, but, <laughs> you know, I just am afraid every day that, that I'll be caught and they'll find out I'm, they think I'm doing what those people are doing. Yeah, just like one of my favorite movies, Brazil, the Terry Gilliam film. Right. 
Yeah, you'll get a twenty-seven B stroke six, and they'll uh, they'll come in they'll come and take you away with a bag over your head. Well, that's okay because I don't want to show my face anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a great face for radio. Speak for yourself, Chris. But you have, you know, your entire demeanor, you know, is kind of a public persona, Chris. I prefer to be anonymous. It's more fun. This way, nobody knows what I look like. Yeah, well, they kind of know. You know, they have that picture of me. Yeah, the shadow knows. <laughs> you know, I tried for the longest time just not to have my picture or anything about me online, and that it just becomes impossible after a while. Well, they've got a picture of me wearing a suit. And I have to tell you, folks, I don't wear suits. They kind of rounded my face, made me look about five years older, and they put a suit jacket on me. And it's all a Photoshop composite. It's a fake. Uh, In furtherance of what? I have no idea. (laughs) You know, there's no sense to it. Somebody tried to blackmail you, or what happened? (laughs) Well, that's kind of wacky, because what are they going to blackmail? I have no money to give. Yeah, but you got uh, that little bichon. Well, that right Teddy now, bear. that's not what you're hearing now. What you're hearing now is the one of the dogs in the neighborhood. You see that? If you hear it, it's more of a guttural sound. Teddy bear's bark is more like a tenor bark. You see. Do you have a dog, Greg? Do not have a dog. Most dogs I do not like. There's a few I like. I, I just I do a dog sit for my paragliding instructor's whippets. I got along with them great because they're basically silent. Um, <laughs> They didn't really they didn't really have too much smell about them because they hardly have any hair. And if I actually took them out and let them run for like five minutes, the rest of the day just laid on the couch. They're kind of like cats and dogs uh, outfits, at least the personality. So I got along with them. Great. I kind of worried that my son wouldn't like the, what we call his adopted brother. <laughs> but we he came over here and they just hit it off beautifully. They really That's- dug each other. Well, that's good. You never know. It's like that, uh, well, this is not even a, a fair representation. Do you guys know that comic um, John Mulaney? No. Okay. He has a joke where he says, I, I, I had a girlfriend, and I thought maybe my girlfriend would like to meet other g- women that I knew. It just didn't work out. He goes, you can't force certain people together. It just it, it doesn't work. What was his joke? Oh, he said, they, they, he said, you couldn't have like an Ocean's Eleven with all women because... About every every ten minutes, two of them would run off to talk crap about the other um, the other nine. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? People are wondering. This is supposed to be a paranormal radio show, and what are we talking about? Talking about dogs and stuff. It's yeah. fine with me. I mean, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Dogs can be paranormal too, I suppose. Right. Yeah, we just have- ask Rupert Sheldrake. Yes, exactly. Is he still having problems with his morphogenetic resonance um, skeptic people? Because the way he presented it, I'm just an idiot. So I just thought that looks pretty interesting. And it, you know, it jibes with a lot of uh, anecdotal evidence. For instance, our cat, way before my wife comes home, she'll go sit, go to the door and just sit there and wait. And it's before she's even driven anywhere near the neighborhood. And she doesn't come home at the same time every night. So she doesn't. Oh, I was going to say it's probably a timing thing. No, it's not. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Well, his experiment. You know about his experiment, right? They, uh, the gist of it was uh, they tw- wanted to see if there was any anecdotal evidence, it, evidence that matched the anecdotal evidence that oh, dogs knew when their owners were coming home. So they put a camera on the dogs and, they, and, they, and a timer, and they also had the people, the owners, out doing whatever they're doing with a timer on. I guess they started it when they left. And the, what they found was what when the dogs did go sit down and wait for the owners to come back, they didn't, didn't do it right before they got home or when they heard the car or anything like that. They did it when the pr- owner made the decision to come home. The owner said, oh, I think I'm going to go home now and gets in the car and comes back. And when they made that decision, the dogs that were doing that would get up from whatever they were doing, walk to the door and sit down and wait. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So I, never I don't know that. if it's been replicated or not. It's probably pretty easy to look up. No, yeah, that's a great idea. Well, that that's what Sheldrake got into uh, some hot water with some of his uh, colleagues. But yeah, Sheldrake got into some hot water with his colleagues uh, for his work on trying to test that very thing, whether pets were psychic or not. And, you know, I guess there was no 
no support, let's put it that way, for <laughs> that kind of work uh, within within his uh, particular corner of the scientific community. And and he got in, into some hot water. And then I think recently, wasn't it last year that he was, uh, I think him and Grant Hancock, if I remember correctly, were were, were censored from uh, uh, TED, from the TED Talks. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. And uh, that ra- raised quite an uproar. Of course, uh, yeah, as you mentioned before, uh, Rupert Sheldrake is uh, fairly well known for his idea of uh, morpho- morphogenic fields. Yeah, and, morph- uh, morphogenic or morphogenetic resonance, yeah. Right, and um, which is, you know, like the monkeys on the North Island of, of Japan, um, all discovering simultaneously that if you have a sand uh, covered potato, if you dipped it in the wa- in the ocean, you could then wash the sand off. And and of course, if if it's just a family of monkeys, you could you could understand them being able to to just learn by uh, observing. But all the monkeys all of a sudden were able to do this uh, even miles away. So he came up with this idea that there is. You know this kind of uh, morphic field that um, animals and people even can uh, tap into, and possibly even plants. Yeah, well, it would explain a lot of things and a lot of inventions happening at the same time, and a right. lot of so-called what's the word evolutionary or uh, intellectual jumps in right. our in our development. All kinds of things, and I, you know, I don't know for sure if it's these are true or anything, but I. Uh, I believe, like you just said, with the monkeys, it is it's sort of testable by looking at the right kind of data. I would suppose, right, right, and being able to have somebody else, uh, you know, do something similar and replicate the results. Yeah, um, either that or like you know, teach a bunch of crows to do a certain thing, and then go on the other side of the world with other crows and see if they did the same thing. Yeah, you know, so, some kind of racial consciousness. It sounds like to me. Yeah, racial. Hey. Or uh, whatever, a species species Yeah, a species con- uh, I think would be a better term. We're talking to Greg Bishop, and therefore we're trying to catch up on 2014 and just talking, just having fun. You know, we're having kind of this, I don't know. I don't know what it is, except to say with Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. <laughs> From the shackles of corporate America, we're the place for independent thinkers. GCN. Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, or devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies, paranormal activity, and Freudian phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free, sent right to your mailbox. Plus, a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to Mr. UFO at webtv.net. That's Mr. UFO at webtv.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionist, and chemist to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. 
You pick up the receiver. With your heart racing and sweat dripping from your forehead, you finally muster the courage to dial the number to call into your favorite talk radio show. It rings once, twice, and then... Hello, it's GCN. What's your name and the state you're calling from? Surprised you got through, you squeak out. Jason from Minnesota. Please hold. As you patiently wait for your turn, you begin to daydream about being a famous talk radio host and what it would be like to have your own show. Jason from Minnesota, you're up. Millions of loyal listeners worldwide waiting to call and talk to you. Caller, are you there? Cheering crowds surround you, calling out your name. Jason! 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 Going once, twice. Okay, we gotta move on to the next caller. You blew it. Huh? Wait, no! Interact with the host you're listening to right now online at GCNlive.com. Click on the community link. Engage with other listeners. Ask questions. Start debates. Don't agree with the host? Let them know. Be a part of the community at GCNlive.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. This is Kurt Seven, the author of UFO Mysteries, and you're listening to the Paracast. With Gene and Chris in the Paracast, Greg Bishop joins us, and we're having a whale of a time here, but there are no whales here. But, you know, the way this show is going, you never know what's going to show up next. Greg, let's talk about a few other things in this wacky field in which we're involved. Okay, what's on your list? That's on my list. Okay, I don't know if you listened to, by the way, last week's show with David Stennett. No. Okay, now he's associated with this New Jersey UFO conference in southern Jersey. Mm -hmm. And we thought he was a pretty straight-ahead guy. Yeah. And then we start talking to him, and about two-thirds through the show, we suddenly find out that he has, shall we say, all right, no problem with it, a fundamentalist religious approach to UFOs. The UFOs are demonic, and he was starting to recite a case where somebody recited some kind of prayer, or in the name of the Lord told the UFOs to go away during one particular instance, and they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard that too. There's some people down in Florida that, well, they're all over the country, but some people I met down in Florida were the, were the same way, which is which is fine. Like I said, I don't have anything against it. It's just that I don't really care to talk to those people because their minds are locked into one way of looking at things. And the most interesting people to me are the people that either challenge me themselves or everybody else with new ideas, whether they're good or not, at least it's variety and things are allowed to evolve. As soon as you make up your mind about something, it turns to stone You and you stop growing and you have to sit there and defend yourself against all these people who don't agree with you to the point after a while where you start to look silly. Or you don't learn anything, which is even worse. What happened here is we tried to ask him some meaningful questions, and he just wouldn't answer them. He was so wedded to this belief. And I felt it kind of familiar because my late uncle, Louis Kaplan, who was a Jew for Jesus, kind of had this similar opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Fundamentalist thinking. See, when people say fundamentalist, they think religious. It's like, no, fundamentalist thinking is anybody that's locked into a certain way of thinking, and it affects every avenue of their experience, and they never change it. And it's usually based on a book or their interpretation of a book. And uh, I do my best to stay away from that as much as possible. <laughs> Speaking of which, what about the disclosure movement? That's being wedded to a particular belief, and now we have as a matter of fact, there's a thread in the forum where they mention again how Stephen Bassett's trying to get this petition going with 100,000 names, demanding disclosure, send yeah. it to the president. Uh -huh. And where's that going to take? 
even if he gets the 100,000 names? It will be ignored. Um, oh, I can guarantee it'll be ignored, um, yeah. meaning ignored publicly. I don't know if it'll be ignored privately, but um, I don't think anything will happen. I don't think anything will happen behind the scenes because it's just not important to a lot of people. It's not important to people getting reelected. It's not important to the power structure. It's not important in a, on a lot of levels. So it's just important to a, f a few people who thinks who think it's really important. It's and toxic the other thing, politically. Yeah. And the other thing, and I've said this many times on my show and other places, is if the disclosure people don't hear, I don't, I'm talking about them as a group, I guess, but if they don't hear the disclosure they want in the way they want to hear it, they're going to say it's a cover up. So they've already made up their mind what's going to be disclosed, and that may not be what the information is or what the secret is or whatever you want to call it, the, the truth, quote unquote, about UFOs or some kind of uh, non-human presence. I think there is a non-human presence. I think there are unidentified flying objects that might be associated with them. But I don't think the government knows much more than that. Um, there may have been crashed saucers or crashed air uh, craft or something. I have no idea. But I also think they have no control over the subject. They have no control over where it goes. They have no control over how people experience it. It's very individualistic, which is very scary for somebody who wants to run things. Therefore, for all these reasons, and like I said, I could be wrong, I think what w would be disclosed would not be what people would expect. Does that make sense? I can think so, yeah. The other thing is here, as long as the government feels they don't represent a threat, Right. That yeah. Very. That's the key yeah. right there. They yeah. don't represent a threat. In as much as they don't represent a threat, why are we worrying about it? Yeah. Forget about it. We got other problems. We got the Keystone Pipeline. We've got the immigration law. Yeah. We got Russia getting nasty. We got um, fundamentalist thinking causing people to die. We've got uh, all kinds of things. We've got uh, very vague threats to the power structure, although not nearly as much as there used to be. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, worldwide wide threats like the country being in debt, 18 trillion dollars um, could put a damper on a lot of things and, <laughs> and render a lot of things kind of not, uh, not important. <laughs> yeah. So for all those reasons, they, they can get as many signatures as they want. And unless it's going to change society in some way to either not uh, to not say anything, so they have to do it or to say something, then it's it's just not going to happen. I don't think I think it's a bunch of wasted effort that could be better served um, trying to look at the pro, uh, the mystery and maybe different, you know, looking at it in, in different ways and uh, trying to solve it that way. I've gotten to the point where I think it's the that groups and and big organizations are really bad for the UFO subject um, and figuring out what it is, because any large group. They, like George Carlin says, they start talking all the same and they all start to wear the same hat and all that. They get a dogma and that dogma just it it solidifies and they don't see anything else. And if we know anything about the UFO subject, we know that it, it's it's uh, not it, it it conforms to almost anybody's idea of what it is. <laughs> you know, it mirrors your expectations of what it's supposed to be. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and the expectation is aliens coming from other planets and. While that's that's a viable option, it's I'm I and a lot of people are tired of it, and it'd be nice to hear other points of view and other ways of looking at it and other ways of affecting it or at least affecting how we think of it. Well, this is an interesting thing to talk about here: whether the phenomenon reflects what we expect it to do and sends it back to us, or is leading us somewhere. I don't know if it's leading us anywhere. It, it, it may be. It also, to me, it's more like, I wrote something about this once at UFO Mystic. It's like, it might be that the phenomenon is conscious. It is composed of some sort of intelligence, but it's just there, like wind and waves and trees are. And in our interaction with it, many things arise. And probably way up like 95 percent of it has to do with what we're thinking what's going through our minds and very little of it may have to do with what what the phenomenon is trying to make us do I, like i said there's 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 a few and probably many examples where i might be wrong but it seems like it's 
like you said, Gene, it's kind of like a mirror of what our expectations are with with a lot of uh, individual variants here and there. If you go to uh, and you know about this guy and you've probably you might have had him on um, Albert Rosales's humanoids um, site. Yeah. Yeah. We've had Albert on. Yeah. I mean, just look at that. I mean, if you want any evidence that there there's, you know, that whatever you want to think extraterrestrials or aliens are, are are just big headed gray, you know, gray entities that are about four to five, you know, three to five feet tall. You, you will be disabused of that idea very right. quickly by going through his it's uh, bewildering and it's fascinating and wonderful and it it makes me it makes me feel like I did when I first started reading UFO books when I was a kid well then I guess I did expect ET to show up because that's what happened I was reading these books from Major Donald Kehoe and he adopted the position very early on like probably three seconds after he started studying the phenomenon and realized <laughs> something real was going on, he said, okay, it's got to be spaceships. Three seconds. I think that was a pretty quick belief system right there. That's the impression I got almost from the very beginning, from the very first book I read of his, which was called, by the way, Flying Saucers from Outer Space. But, yes. you know, you look at scientific developments now, Greg Bishop, and you see indications that we're accepting life in outer space anyway. And that's why it just furthers the expectation that UFOs are ET. We'll get into that in a moment here. Of yeah. course, we're having a great time with Greg Bishop and Gene and Chris just sitting around chatting, and we'll be answering your questions in a few bits. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. <laughs> Suspensions, FCC investigations. That's man cow for you. Hear him here. GCN. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S. Com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Services. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices a 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturing if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 
100-foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. What good is a Big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey water filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. Let me remind you, we've got our new premium service called Paracast Plus. You go to plus.thepowercast.com, P-L-U-S dot thepowercast.com. And what does that mean? It means you get... The ad-free version of the PowerCast. The ads are taken out, better quality audio. You get to hear all that great expensive equipment that Chris and I and Greg Bishop are using. I don't know what Greg Bishop's using, but he sounds pretty good. Anyway, seriously, you get that. You also get the new After the PowerCast podcast, which is exclusive for PowerCast Plus members. So check it out, plus.thepowercast.com. Modest subscription fee, 5 bucks a month, $50 a year. It's worth it. So we're kind of doing a UFO paranormal wrap-up or whatever it is. We're just talking with Greg Bishop, and we're covering all sorts of subjects. So as I mentioned before, we're learning that more and more potential Earth-type planets are being discovered in the universe. I think the Kepler telescope revealed eight more guys, right? In the the Hubble telescope? We're, we're up to a thousand now, I think. Yeah, right. The total is about a thousand, but they just added eight more to the list, saying these eight were closer to Earth like than most of the others. Uh huh. Then again, maybe that's a self fulfilling prophecy, too. We expect to see life in the universe and it will come. I guess so. Careful what you wish for. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I, I, think that maybe occasionally there might be some other life that has achieved some sort of interstellar travel and not in the way we think of it where you go from one thing to the other with you know taking many years or whatever but in the kind of the wormhole instant travel thing they, they may be able to do that if they're able to do that then the you know the eth makes a lot more sense but what doesn't make sense is the number of like why would they need so many you know, why would all these ships and beings and everything be coming here? It's like, well, why are we so interesting? Are we that special? Or maybe we are. And if there's so many of these planets that are in the Goldilocks, whatever, maybe, or maybe it doesn't matter, you know? Maybe it's maybe it's not a time thing. Maybe it just looks like a lot of them because they, this point in history, in our time flow, whatever it is, is coming here and checking us out. And they don't have to be in a time flow. They're just... They're, they're coming from whenever, and they just all happen to be showing up now because this is right before something amazing happens or something horrible happens or who knows. But, you know, I, I also tend to think that there's a lot of things going on with the with the UFO and the extraterrestrial, whatever, the alien thing. They're a lot closer to home. And, that of course, that's not – that doesn't make me special. Many, many, many people think that. Yeah. Um, and that maybe – whatever it is that's not us that it contacts us or we see or have interaction with from time to time is from near here or from here or like i said before maybe unstuck in time and they can come by whenever the hell they want it's just us it looks like they're coming by now 
who knows? Or maybe they're able to manifest in some way, or maybe use bilocation uh, in in the quantum physics sense, where you know uh, there there are resonant particles are resonant with each other throughout the universe, no matter where they are. Things like that. I mean, I, not, this not sounds local. vague, but there, there's so many other exciting ideas. Well, Greg, that that's a perfect lead-in for a question uh, from one of our listeners at forum.theparacast.com. Well, you can go ahead and um, ask questions of our guests. And it comes from Bob in D.C., and he goes, what do you think of the theory that Earthlings may be one of the most advanced species in the universe? Harvard University astronomy professor and director of the Harvard Origins of Life Initiative, Dimitar Sasilov, says intelligent life may be in its very young stage in the observable universe. Its 200 billion galaxies show a clear potential to continue on as we see them today for hundreds of billions of years, if not much longer. Because planets and life are so young in our universe, says Sasala, perhaps the human species are not latecomers to the party. We may be among the early ones. Might this explain why we have not yet had any overt contact from out beyond this planet? That's a good question. Yeah, I guess it might. I mean, how old is the universe supposed to be? I can't remember. Because Earth is what, 4 billion years old? Or? It's about 15, 15 billion. Oh, 15 billion. Okay. And the universe is supposedly what, 30 year? No, no, the universe is about 15 billion. Oh, really? Well, uh, uh, correct me if well, I'm wrong, Gene. I think the estimates keep changing, so let's it's just leave it It's somewhere that. around 15. Sure. We're, we're a little less than a third. Uh, we developed about two-thirds of the way into the life of the uh, since the Big Bang. Uh, right. I could be way off base here, but I, 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 I don't think I am. We're yeah, strictly well, average, folks. Just sit yeah. down here. Don't get the egos. <laughs> afraid here we are just an average planet an average solar system with an average sun oh uh, well we could be i don't i i do not know if we are as a species i do not know if we're average i i, I wouldn't know i mean i'm not i'm not a scientist my my gut feeling is that like i said before perhaps time does not matter and somebody somewhere has figured out how to unhook from it and it just time doesn't matter to them it, they they maybe they're not even physical anymore or if they they aren't, they, maybe they can manifest physically somewhere. But the but uh, I think it's more like something that's intelligent uh, senses or knows there's another intelligence somewhere and it wants to come have a look at it. Or maybe it doesn't even have to go anywhere. It can just do it by sitting on its own planet and projecting itself over here. I have no idea, but I'm really intrigued by the uh, unstuck from time idea. I think that would make a great science fiction story, Unstuck from Time. It probably has. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. sure it has. I haven't read all the science fiction novels there, despite my great age and having written a few myself. Unstuck from Time. I kind of like that concept. Well, yeah. Maybe whoever it is, that just doesn't make any difference to them anymore. It's like, if, if I want to go over there and you know sit in the other chair, that's the same regard they have for what we think as linear time, and it doesn't look linear to them. It's just everything is there all the time. <laughs> I keep saying time, but th that time doesn't exist. It's just mm -hmm. our linear flow of it is to them is just like us looking at, at something that lives in a two-dimensional universe or something. Well, there's quite a number of indigenous cultures on the planet, including uh, the Pueblo Indians here in North America, that, that don't really consider the past and the future. Everything is in the now. In fact, mm -hmm. I think the Hopi don't even have words uh, for the future or past. Everything is in is always in a present tense. Hmm. Yeah, well, that would make sense. It was, it it might also explain um, the huge gulf in understanding between the uh, cultures. Uh, still, actually, but especially when they first encountered each other. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting. I, I speak with Martin Gashriasomo, who's the Hopi traditional Hopi elder, and. When he talks about the laws of Columbus uh, in a, a, a rather derogatory fashion, <laughs> it's almost like he's describing a some, an article he read in, in today's paper. Um, you know, <laughs> going back almost 500 years, I mean, it's not you know go over 500 years. It's, it's like nothing to him. It's like uh, it happened uh, moments ago. Did it's you very ever... interesting? Oh, go ahead. Uh, actually, I've I've always uh, been intrigued by by the timelessness uh, in, of that concept. Did you ever read any of Frank Cushing's books? Yeah, I did. Actually, um, uh, my, my Zuni elder friend, Clifford Mahoudi's grandfather, was very good friends with uh, Frank Hamilton Cushing when he, he first came to Zuni. And uh, 
was actually accepted into the tribe and into uh, the Warrior uh, Medicine Society and actually learned the language. He was he was the first uh, Westerner that really was able to make some inroads into the Zuni culture. And he wrote a very, uh, a, the only real book on the Zuni uh, that looked at, you know, at the, at the entire culture from, you know, a, a anthropological uh, point of view. There have been others. Yeah. But nobody uh, was accepted in uh, to the degree that Cushing was. Yeah, I, I'm very interested in his stuff. Uh, and I have been for a while. The, the reason I thought of him is because um, maybe, Chris, you know, one time he asked them. Because he knew that probably that uh, 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 what's his uh, Alvaro Cabeza de Vaca probably wandered over somewhere where the Zuni were in the late 15th or late 16th century. Yeah, no, he, he definitely did. Um, along with Esteban, the Moroccan. Yeah. Yeah. The Cause Moor. they remembered because the black, uh, the African black guy was with him, Esteban. Yeah. And he said, how long ago was that? And they're like, I don't know. I, so they, they brought out pieces of corn to try and represent how many generations it was. And it, it lined up apparently quite well with a, about how long it had been since this had happened because the, uh, I think he had shown up and the, and Esteban had shown up and, Eventually, they wore out their welcome, and they actually killed Esteban because he was—I guess—he was being rude or. No, something. they killed him because the, his two companions, Cabeza de Vaca and, and another guy in Esteban, were actually taken in by the Zuni for a period of time, and they left, and they they ended up uh, making it all the way back to Mexico City, right oh, as thought, uh, Coronado. Oh, that's right. Because, Esteban came back. That's right. And then Esteban was conscripted by Coronado to lead the army back up into the right. southwest. Let's go into this in more detail. It's getting very complicated <laughs> in our next segment with Greg Bishop and Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. We are the premier independent talk radio network. The Genesis Communications Network. G-C-N. Good people need help. The Homeowners Association said we had weeds and fined us $25. We told them they had the wrong house. They said if we didn't pay it, they'd file a lien. Our attorney demanded photographs, witnesses, and told them if they couldn't provide this, they must cease and desist. Issue solved. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Hi, Ted Anderson. I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800 800-686-2237. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your main your credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Okay, we're trying to define what this show is about, and maybe a few more episodes will get there. Chris, we <laughs> had to interrupt you on that long presentation. This is very interesting stuff. The Zuni uh, culture, uh, I, I, the Pueblo Indians, I think, uh, by and large, are really tapped into some star people 
type uh, traditions, and and they have quite a an elaborate system of kachinas, which which uh, according to them are are beings that have been visiting us for many many uh, thousands of years, and uh, it's broken down into uh, quite a a dizzying array of of responsibilities. Uh, each kachina has uh, different roles within the society. Has taught the the Indians uh, particular things, and this whole idea of star people um, has has been pretty uh, a pretty closely guarded secret to the uh, Native Americans in the Southwest. And Clifford Mahoudi, who's going to be presenting at the International UFO Congress, is really the first Zuni that's come out and really tried to equate the ancient traditional knowledge with the modern um, sense of ufology and um, incorporating, you know, 20th century and 21st century encounters and facts uh, with the ancient knowledge. And and he's been very courageous to do this, and it, 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 to some detriment with his standing with his tribe. Uh, the Zuni are really not that keen on a lot of this information getting out uh, outside of the medicine societies and the Kachina societies. So, you know, this is a touchy area and he's he's quite courageous to come out and talk about this stuff. And I've, I've been very fortunate to be on the receiving end of some pretty interesting information uh, that's really kind of made me scratch my head and, and go, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I had somebody from the Hickory Apache tribe at Dulce uh, get me aside at one point and talk to me about this a little bit too. He didn't really go into detail about it, but he started drawing star charts and telling me stuff that his grandfather told him about where they may have come from or part of their tribe came from. And I don't think he was messing with me. I think he was kind of being serious. He, he told me something once, too, that his grandfather had mentioned to him. He asked his grandfather at one point, he was in training uh, to be, uh, you know, to continue on the medicine lineage that his grandfather was kind of in charge of. And mm -hmm. he, he asked him, he said, where do these these silver ships come from? Where do these UFOs come from? And his grandfather was sitting at a table, um, at the kitchen table, and there was a salt shaker and a and it, like a ketchup bottle or something there. And he moved <laughs> the ketchup bottle aside, made a motion upwards out of the table, and then slammed the ketchup bottle back where it was and went nehe, which means don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I always found that very compelling. Yeah, that, that's as far as he would go with it with me, but I was only there for a little while. I also noticed, and I've talked about this with you, Chris, and we can get back to the UFO paranormal stuff, but I've noticed with with a lot of people from a lot of tribes that you must shut up first. Second, you must talk BS for a while, probably far longer than you think. And then in a period of hours, days, weeks, or months, things will start to be revealed to you. But you can't just walk in and start asking oh, gosh, questions. No. It oh, just my God, doesn't no. work. No, it no, no. It's just uh, there's a whole cultural, uh, there's a whole disconnect uh, between a native way of, of imparting information if they even are willing to. Yeah. It, there's a lot of trust that needs to be there to begin with. But, uh, yeah, it is a process. And, and you, we have talked about this, Greg. It's 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 a process that really actually takes years, I think. Uh it takes and, uh, years and a sense of humility, humbleness, and friendliness, actually. I mean, you if you are truly interested and truly like the person, I think it helps. I mean, it helps in any culture, but it, yeah. especially with, for Native American, if you come in right away talking too much or asking too many questions, they will tell you what you want to hear, so you will leave. Right. Well, again, another thing that we both agreed on is – Everything is 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 kind of sideways. There's yes. There's no real direct. You know, you can't ask direct questions. You have to kind no, of beat no. around the bush and and kind of do things by inference and kind of hint around at things. Uh, yeah. And then that creates openings, I think, for them to respond. And then then they. Uh, they tend to to respond, I think, a little bit more directly. Yeah. You you can't just you know barge in like a bull in a china shop and and expect to get any sort of information, especially if you've got a, a TV crew you know hanging hanging behind you or whatever. Yeah, I and mean, that's going to just absolutely sh slam any door. Yeah, that, and as it's probably the way they've been forever, but especially in the last couple hundred years, they've just finally realized it's not worth it. <laughs> It's like what we always get the you know the 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 bad end of the lollipop when it whenever we just say oh okay so why right. bother anymore you know and it's hard not to agree with that 
yeah, but it, it is changing. Uh, there, there are some, like I said, like Clifford Mahuti is is an example of someone who walks in both worlds. I mean, he can do differential equations and advanced calculus, and is a civil engineer. Mm-hmm. Yet he also has the the knowledge of the oral tradition of his people, the dances, the the the, the medicine uh, and the plants and the stories and the traditions. He ha- he walks in both worlds. He's a very very rare individual, and I've been very very lucky and blessed to be able to count him among my my closest friends. And and it's it's really interesting to see how he is able to flip-flop back and forth between those two worlds it's it must be very difficult for him and 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 there's you got to have some sort of switch that allows you to disconnect from one and go into the other and then vice versa I, i'm not sure how he does it but he's able to do it mm-hmm. yeah it's it's really rare too bad there's not more of those people because uh, things would probably move along a lot quicker and understanding would happen a lot quicker you would hope well, I, I think that indigenous people, uh, by and large, uh, are sitting on a tremendous treasure trove of information mm-hmm. that really does fly in the face of some of the scientific thinking that we have, especially in the paranormal and the UFO realm. I think that they know a lot of things that they don't divulge to outsiders. I think this knowledge has been there for hundreds of generations, possibly. Yep. And I think this knowledge is, is slowly uh, withering on the vine and, and is being lost. And I, I think it's important for them to have the technology, the training, to be able to document their own traditions, their own stories, their dances, their their you know their their medical knowledge, uh, their healing knowledge, and the star the star knowledge. I think they should be able to have the uh, multimedia equipment to be able to document these things so that they don't lose it. And every year that goes by. They're losing major chunks of their of their culture, and right now the last remaining um, traditional elders are all in their uh, late 80s, uh, in, into their 90s, and mm-hmm. within 10 years, a huge percentage of that information is going to be lost. It's going to be just flowing downstream uh, under the bridge. Yeah, well, it's one thing you mentioned in in just now kind of made this sense to me, and over what we've been talking over uh, about the last 10 minutes, maybe some of that indirectness and some of that uh, not confronting something head on is really valuable in trying to understand uh, UFOs and the paranormal. And it's really hard for, you know, uh, somebody, a Western trained person or a person that grew up in the culture to be able to look at things in that way because it's, 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 it's cultural, it's probably genetic, and very hard to explain to an outsider. So there might be some value there, of, uh, but it, it'd be really hard to explain to somebody who didn't come from your same culture. Yeah, well, it's it's only a matter of the approach. I mean, you know, when people, you know, I go out sky watching, they say, oh, man, you, you got to look over here in the east. This is this is where everything comes from. Well, I automatically turn around and look in the west. Yeah. I tell them, you, yeah, go ahead. You look over there. I'm looking over here. <laughs> yeah. Just some, you know, it, it, one suggestion is an indirect approach. And I have no idea what form the indirect approach would take. Um, it probably takes a lot of, it would take a lot of self-discipline training and immersion in that kind of that that kind of way of thinking. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to do something right now where I don't um, any any personal change is really hard. I'm trying to do something now where I don't worry about so much what other people think about me in very specific ways, just to see what'll happen. And not, you know, I'm I'm I don't I'm not afraid I'm going to turn into a dick or anything like that. Well, they've already accused me of that in the forums. I don't want to get into that right now. We have Greg Bishop joining Gene and Chris and attempting laughter. Does anyone remember laughter with Gene and Chris? You're in the Paracast. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. 
first game attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Friends, this is Alex Jones for MidasResources.com. For more than 15 years, I have exclusively used Midas Resources for all my precious metal needs. Whether it's bullion or collectibles you're looking for, Midas Resources is simply the best. I own my gold as a hedge against inflation. This Federal Reserve fiat currency could go the way of the Deutschmark and the Weimar Republic any time. In these historically dangerous times, it makes sense to physically hold gold and silver. Midas already has some of the best deals in the industry. But if you give them a call and mention the radio special, they will give you a list of the day's super specials. Midas brokers are standing by to answer all your questions at 800-686-2237. They also have a lot of informative free literature explaining the opportunities and risk of holding precious metals. They are ready to answer your questions at 800-686-2237. Again, that's 800-686-2237. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of hb extract it's extremely effective and it starts working in just days visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers and we've never increased our price in over 10 years that makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it a healthy heart is a happy heart call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com the Genesis Communications Network is one of America's premier broadcasters of captivating talk radio. We thank you for listening. Now, now, just imagine, there are thousands of people who are just as passionate about radio as you are. But what you may not realize is how easy and affordable it is to advertise with us. Radio commercials for your business could be heard on hundreds of radio stations across the U.S. every day. We can help you by creating an effective radio advertising campaign for your company. From script writing to producing your commercials. Just like the one you're listening to right now. No other network provides the level of customer service we do. When it comes to radio advertising, we are your one-stop shop. And no matter how big or small your business is, we can help. Email us at advertise at GCNlive.com. And an experienced advertising executive will help you take the first step towards driving more customers to your business or website. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Ladies and gentlemen, do you remember laughter? Greg Bishop joins Gene and Chris. And I haven't figured out what we're talking about yet. We're looking for a topic, and maybe we'll find one. Chris, you want well, to get to another question? the topic was uh, someone on the forums calling you a dick, Gene. <laughs> hey, that was times. it right there, and I resemble that remark. Well, it's really hard to change your own consciousness. I mean, just uh, look, at, uh, look at any spiritual tradition, even Western occultism or any Eastern tradition, any esoteric tradition it, that involves you in trying to change your basic way of looking at things and doing things. It's probably one of the most difficult things ever. And I think that the study of UFOs and the paranormal needs that. And the people in it probably need a dose of that too. Looking at the way they look at things. Tough one. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, uh, we have a, a couple of questions here from Burnt State and he mentions uh, Discordia. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that would be a classic example. The Church of Bob, you know, the uh, the Church of the Subgenius would be... Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of very uh, 
valuable insights within the absurdity of reality. I, th I think there's th there is a kind of a thread that that a magical thread that you can follow that goes through a lot of this information, and some of it is is trickstress in nature. Some of it is discordian in nature. Some of it is totally. Um, it just it doesn't make any sense on the surface, but then there is some sort of underlying thread of of I don't know, like absurdity. A, a, it doesn't make logical sense. Yeah, exactly. But there's something within that illogic that is logical. Yeah, or there is a signal within that illogic that is hard to pick up, but is there. I don't even know how much to describe it any more than that. But once you, you know, Chris knows this pretty well. I mean, once you're around the weirdness for a while, things start to reveal them to themselves to you, um, ideas, concepts, um, and it's not something that you can teach to somebody or tell them how to do. It just comes from an individual growth with the subject and in grow personal growth. So I think that um, people that have been involved in it and the quiet ones, the ones you don't hear from too much, they may be more on to what's going on than than most people think. And you know what? They're probably not going to say anything about it. <laughs> those who know don't say and those who say don't know kind of thing, well, which well, is unfortunate, but, you know. That's a perfect lead in for a question from Burnt State. It's more of an observation, but he says on your show, uh, Radio Misterioso, you have spoken frequently about how you feel that the next important discovery in ufology will come from someone working in some unrelated field. Since our pursuit of understanding UFOs technologically has produced such few results, what areas or aspects of ufology do you think we should be concentrating on? The absurd, the stuff that doesn't fit. <laughs> yeah. Something I've mentioned before, which is uh, that the the stuff that Rick Strassman did with the uh, the DMT experiments and people saying that they were having basically very um, died in the wool or very close to died in the wool abduction experiences, and all they were doing was lying on a table under the influence of a drug. Um, that's really important, I think. Yeah, I agree. Let's go back to that. Just saying that. Under the influence of a drug, you imagine you're being abducted. Now let's look at the people who feel they've been abducted. Are they under the influence of something? Maybe their brains have been dumping uh, dimethyltryptamine into their system, and, and they're, they're mistaking a surge of DMT, natural DMT, um, for an abduction experience. That's, that's a really f potentially fruitful avenue to look at. Yeah, well, I don't think... Everybody that was on the DMT and everybody that has a uh, abduction experience is imagining it. I think that occasionally that, especially maybe with the DMT people, that they hook into something and their brain and the way they process it is the abduction experience. Um, whatever is trying to affect them and affect their uh, affect their thinking and affect them i guess even physically who knows is is there i think there is an other i don't think uh, well maybe it's some sort of doorway that needs to be opened uh, whether by design or or inadvertently yeah well see i'm having problems here chris because it's it's the language thing i'm trying to describe something and i think i know what i'm talking about <laughs> but I'm not exactly sure how to put it into words. Like we were saying with America, you know, with the Native Americans, I can dance around what I think I mean with the words, but I can't specifically say it. And because when Gene said they were imagining they were having a, a an abduction experience, I don't know what the line is between imagining a drug experience, quote unquote, reality or whatever. Right. What's going on in their brains is is real for them at the time. And, you know, and there's no way they can communicate that to other people except with these horrible, this horrible thing we have called language. Yeah, making weird noises with our mouths. <laughs> Ladies and so, gentlemen, this is the Making Weird Noises with Our Mouths radio show. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I, no, and this is something Terrence McKenna um, yeah. was really fascinated by. Of course, uh, we already uh, mentioned Rupert Sheldrake, uh, Terrence McKenna, Rupert Sheldrake, and Ralph Abraham 
uh, are famous for a series of trialogues that they did, all three of them together, riffing on subjects like the three of us are doing right now. And one of the things that McKenna was ex- very fascinated by was the byproduct of uh, you know psilocybin mushrooms and DMT, uh, which uh, is is glossolalia. It's people mm-hmm. so intense and so wanting to communicate what they are experiencing. And as you're pointing out, language is is it sometimes is absolutely uh, completely deficient. You cannot it gets come in up the with. Way. <laughs> with words, and they would actually start creating their own language to try to communicate what what they were trying to communicate. In other words, it's glossolalia. They would be speaking in in tongues, yeah, basically, and it would make perfect sense to them. But <laughs> and it would if you were monitoring no the experiment in the room, you'd be scratching your head, going, uh, "I better get the straitjacket ready, there, yeah. pal." <laughs> And it made no sense to anybody else except them. It's a, uh, and I think that's what the UFO thing is. Ultimately, I think Whitley Strieber talked about this. He said, whatever it is, this is one view of it, whatever it is that's trying to affect us and trying to communicate with us, does it on a very individualistic way, uh, uh, basis, very democratic. I mean, you know, anybody can have the experience and anybody does. It's just that they can't go and they can't start some kind of revolution and have everybody thinking that way because there's no way to describe what's going on with those people except to have it happen to yourself. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's completely immersed in the experiential realm as opposed to the trying to communicate it to somebody else. They have to have the experience or an aspect of the experience to even be in the same ballpark to understand it. Um, yeah. And that's why it's interesting to me, uh, the motivations of people like Gene or, or Stanton Friedman and others were absolutely immersed in and completely fascinated by the subject of the paranormal or UFOs uh, in particular. And yet they've never had an, a UFO experience that they can definitively say that was something that was you cannot explain. Yeah. We can't explain this, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> but we'll try. Greg Bishop is with us with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. We are America's largest independently owned communications network, GCN. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com yeah? Did you want to see me, sir? Well, I did, but now that I do, I'm not so sure. Sir? Johnson, I got a mission for you that could change your life. Oh, good, sir. It involves traveling halfway around the world without so much as half a clue of where you're going or what you're going to do when you get there. Situation normal, sir? Uh-huh. Well, I'll be leading this mission, Johnson, so I'll be telling you what to do. You, sir? That's right, Johnson, and I say first things first. Oh, good plan, sir. Yeah, and what I say is first is food. Always remember that, Johnson. Food is a big deal. Sir, my brother-in-law can give us a really good deal on some surplus MREs. Johnson, if you've got half a brain... And that empty head of yours, you'll call the freeze dry guy like I did. That food is better for you, it rehydrates faster, and it's good, Johnson. And it keeps for up to 30 years. Will we be gone that long, sir? Well, I hope not. Now get your supplies organized and meet me down to the pier at dawn on Sunday. We sail at sunrise. Yes, sir. This adventure is brought to you by the freeze dry guy. Call 866 404 3663 or visit freezedryguy.com. 
Have you ever noticed how many sick and miserable people there are? I'm serious. I'm talking about people of all ages who have conditions and diseases which affect their quality of life. Most of them seem to have one thing in common, polypharmacy. That is dependence on multiple prescription drugs with side effects that actually make them sicker and sicker, not healthy. The good news is that people are waking up to the fact that if you supply your body with all of the nutrients it requires, you will feel better, be healthier, and have a better life. It's important to know that Beyond Tangy Tangerine is the most amazing, great-tasting, comprehensive nutritional supplement. Besides supplying all the vitamins our bodies need, it also supplies the necessary minerals that are required for the vitamins to kick in. Look, folks, I'm hooked on it, and I think if you try it, you'll become hooked. This stuff really works. That's why I'm urging you to make it part of your daily health regimen. Visit InfoWarsTeam.com to secure your canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine today. Sign up for auto ship and save on shipping costs. That's Beyond Tangy Tangerine at InfoWarsTeam.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned into the Paracast. Let me tell you what, you're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? Sparking all sorts of interesting speculation. When Greg is here, it becomes an exciting time because we never know where we will go, or how we'll get there, or whether we will get there. Shall we continue? Yeah, we don't have to get anywhere. That that's uh, that's gotten us nowhere trying to get somewhere. <laughs> exactly. I agree. I agree. If you lived here, you'd be home by now. Yeah. <laughs> that's the entire thing we were just talking about the last. Exactly. <laughs> You're right, Chris. If you lived here, you'd be home now. <laughs> I think I live here. The landlord hasn't come to throw us out yet. Maybe next week. Yeah, well, that's that's good. That's progress. Well, here's another question from Burnt State, who's one of our uh, just brilliant minds that uh, post at forum.theparacast.com. He's uh, over the 2,600 post mark, and he's had 2,700 likes for his post, which is, uh, which is a real testament to the quality of his thinking and the quality of his questions. I remember him. Now, we had, Greg, uh, recently, we discussed the Heaven's Gate cult. And he's wondering, uh, it, obviously, that show is sticking in his mind because he wants to know what your thoughts are on the Heaven's Gate cult and the idea of moral responsibility in ufology. Should ufologists take responsibility for lies and deceptions that may influence or impact in individuals such as the Heaven's Gate comic companion or with hypnotic regression and hypnosis subjects? Well, I think they're eh, I'm not sure. I think they're two different things. If somebody's in some sort of a you know very specific group with very specific ideas looking for any excuse to do whatever they're going to do, I don't think the UFO community or commentators or anything are responsible what crazy people do. Right. You know, that's that's I'm sorry to say that. I mean, it's like you, you can <laughs> they're going to they're going to do something crazy no matter what happens. They're going to find some other excuse, probably. Right. So in other words, Chuck Schrammick, when he came up with this. Uh, photograph he claimed was a companion to Hale-Bopp. There was no reason for him not to do that. Yeah. If, if he had known you... that Heaven's Gate was going to yeah. jump on, on board on that whole idea and use as an excuse to, to check out, it's not his responsibility you know, no. to answer what, what for to what do? crazy people do. What are you supposed to do? Check everything you say in case some crazy person takes it and runs with it? You would never say anything. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's not your responsibility. And I'm I'm sorry those people killed themselves and all that, but the thing of going and looking for blame is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Just be was, careful when you draw cartoons of Muhammad. 
Yeah, exactly. And the, the other part of the question about um, uh, abduction research, I guess that's what it meant, uh, what he meant, um, and the responsibility there, you know, there I have a little bit more specific ideas. Yeah, I think a little responsibility is is shared, maybe a lot, by somebody who is looking for evidence of a certain thing and somebody comes to them thinking something has happened to them and the interaction between those two is basically a feedback loop, I think, in a lot of ways. And that's that that's probably not good. I used to have people write to me when I was when I was doing an excluded middle magazine. I'm sure you two have had the same thing. They'll write to you and say, these weird things have happened to me and I don't know what to do and I don't know who to talk to. And I would answer these people. I would answer their emails or mail or whatever. And I would say that the first thing you should do is not go to a UFO researcher. Do not do that. Go somewhere else first. Go to a, you know, a, a, a therapist or a psychologist or somebody you like to talk to or, you know, friends of yours or whatever. Somebody you think you can talk to and talk about this. Don't go to the UFO person first. I don't know if that was the right thing to say, but my gut feeling was that if there is a possibility that something else is going on, it it behooves that person to know that something else might be going on, not the standard, I'm being taken by aliens and have my having my DNA um, sampled and having, you know, false pregnancies, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know exactly what goes on in that. I interviewed Peter Robbins and how he worked with Bud Hopkins for many years. And I don't agree with Bud Hopkins and I don't totally agree with Peter either. But the thing is, what I what I came to the conclusion with Peter was if I was in that situation and working with him the whole time, I might have a different opinion. If I had right. been in the middle of that for as many years as he was, I have no idea. But you know, on the face of it, to me, it seems like there is a co-creation of some sort of narrative going on, which every time somebody talks to a UFO researcher or induction therapist gets further away from what that thing might have been, that, that, that is what I think. No. Well, I think the underlying thing is is I think Bud really genuinely was trying to help people, and I know Peter. I mean, Peter is one of the, the is, is one of the most glowing, wonderful guys you could ever want to meet. Yeah, I mean, which just, is why I listen. He's got a huge heart. Seriously, but you know, the road to hell can be paved with good intentions as well, <laughs> exactly. too. So, yeah, you know, I hate to be cliche about it, but it it is a real. It's it's really tenuous ground when you're dealing with deeply rooted um, issues uh, that may be psychological, maybe emotional, maybe actually phenomenological. Uh, it's really it's 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 very tenuous uh, territory, thin ice. Yeah. Well, my my natural inclination every time I say something, and and people know this is is like you, Chris. I mean, if, if somebody's looking one way, I'm going to look the other way to see what's going on. And if there's a big if here's my philosophy, if there's more than two people in a, in a group doing the same thing, I usually run. You know, it's a, even if I think it's going to do me some good. Right. It sounds <laughs> like the Groucho. famous statement from Groucho Marx, of course. Yeah, I would not want to be a member, member of any club that would have me as a member. Yeah, I guess I kind of agree with that. I mean, every time I join something, after a while, I kind of I kind of think everybody's every time you say something heretical, something that isn't part of the dogma, people look at you funny. Or if they're if they they're really scared, they they try to excommunicate you or look at you like you're crazy or whatever. And all you're trying to do is is question things. Yeah. And some people don't like that. Groups especially don't like that because it threatens the group dynamic. You know, it threatens. Well, the, and the, also the groups are looking to be entertained. And that's that. Here's another question from the forums. At, uh, you can post your questions at forum.theparacast.com. This one comes from longtime forum member SRL. And he writes, the Paradigm Symposium is coming up in October 2015. And while at the website, I was looking over the presenters, and there's quite a selection. The question here for anyone willing to take a stab at it is, what percentage of presenters at any given event should a reasonable individual consider as primarily entertainers and not to be taken seriously? In your opinions, do attendees realize that some presenters lack academic credibility, moral stamina, and intellectual honesty? Or is it that an attendee's primary desire is to be entertained? Being that all of you have either attended or presented at such events, what percentage of attendees, attendees would you venture felt through experiencing the extraordinary and attended in an effort 
of mitigating their experiences. Uh, I'm not sure. It's, in other words, I think what he's saying is uh, what percentage of the people that are going there are not there just simply to be entertained, but are trying to get to the bottom of some personal, personal thing that they've experienced. Well, I think they all want to be entertained to some degree. When I go to the things, I want to be entertained too. But I want to be entertained by, you know, something that I have not heard before that pushes the conversation in a different direction. Maybe it might not even be a fruitful one. But I think that the majority of people, like in, in you know, in any group, and in this, you know, in, in, we're in our, in, you know, in the United States and probably some other countries too, I don't think they're interested in answers. They're interested in um, basically just more titillating stories, UFO porno, and maybe different you know aspects of that UFO porno. And that's not to say that the people that are doing the the speaking are there just to make money or just to be famous or just. I think if you know, at least a few of them are there because they really have something to say. They really think that there's there's something that needs to be said, and they they're sincere in their presentation of it. I, I like to think that I did that when I was, you know, the lot of times I've spoken and I realized after a while that people did like to be entertained. So I would, you know, I would go off script quite a bit because, you know, Chris, you probably noticed this when you go oh, yeah. off script and start talking about stuff, people suddenly get very engaged and and yeah. uh, want to hear what's going on. There they was, don't want to have a canned spiel, which is yeah, part of exactly. it. Let's yeah. do our break here. We have Greg Bishop and we've got Gene and Chris. Sometimes you're in the Paracast. A little right, a little left, but always independent minded. The Genesis Communications Network, GCN. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there's The Coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Talk to a sales rep at iWeb.com. Use the promo code TECHNIGHTOWL for a special discount. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV 
Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. What good is a big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey water filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. My name is Richard Dolan. You're listening to the Paracast. Go to plus.theparacast.com, P-L-U-S.theparacast.com to take advantage of our new premium package. What that means is for $5 a month or $50 a year, you get the ad-free version of the Paracast, a higher resolution quality copy okay and also the after the paracast podcast plus stop the paracast.com we have greg bishop and we're talking about all sorts of things that of course are out of the box or not always acceptable in different surroundings but we have to do it now the obvious question here is if we were actually to solve the ufo mystery all these lecturers, all the people who write books, all the people who are professional UFO researchers making a living, wouldn't they be out of business, Greg? I guess they'd be out of business, but I don't think it's likely at all that we're going to, in our lifetimes or in the foreseeable future, solve, quote unquote, the UFO mystery. Yeah. I because think it's if we solve part of it, it will bifurcate or multifurcate into other mysteries that will be just as interesting, fascinating, and and inscrutable as the UFO mystery is now. Right. I agree. And if a, an aspect of the field is proven correct, then they'll have lots of cachet and, and they'll be, uh, they'll be um, acknowledged for guessing correctly or, you know, postulating correctly. And everybody else will be like, oh, well, but I, I agree with Greg. I don't think there's a snowball chance in hell. Sorry for the cliche, but I, it's a good one. Um, I don't think that there's any possibility that overarching, complete answers to this, to uh, quite a number of mysteries, not only UFOs, but but I think paranormal subjects in general. The more you know, the more you know you don't know. The more questions get answered, the more questions arise. And, and that's, I think that's part of human nature we're gonna we're being you know that carrot is dragging us down the hill and we're kicking ourselves in the in the rear ends to keep keep us moving well are we then creating the ufo mystery to keep us moving well someone like a david per perkins would say that he would say that this is an evolutionary imperative that we have designed collectively to pull ourselves off planet to seed the uh universe before the earth gets taken out by an asteroid or coronal mass ejection yeah i think and I've been bitching and whining about this for quite a while that we don't give ourselves enough credit for creating what we think is the UFO thing that, that uh, we don't give ourselves enough credit for that and don't notice it. And I think a lot of the mystery here is, is the way we perceive things, talk about things, go about solving problems, mysteries, and interact with each other. A lot of these things are involved in the UFO thing and it's invisible to us because it's coming from us. And I think that might be part of the, the mystery and part of the uh, getting further along in it is realizing how much we contribute to it. It's a co-creative process. In yeah, other words. exactly. And if it's a co-creative process, here's a question from Silly Rabbit. Have attitudes in the mainstream media shifted? 
Is coverage of high strange events becoming more serious or even handed in tone? Or are we still stuck with the ridiculous X-Files music, non-serious reporting? I would add Twilight Zone themes and Little Green Men uh, comments. Are there any discernible trends in this regard? And I will add, if we are part of the co-creative process, the media has tremendous influence in creating certain pop culture views of this phenomena or these phenomena within the public. And we better be careful with the kind of uh, co-creative uh, images that we're, <laughs> you yeah. know, that we're creating for ourselves. So what do you think about trends in the media, Greg? I think that if you're interested in the UFO subject, you should not watch any UFO shows at all. <laughs> oh, I couldn't have said it better. Don't. Don't watch them. Just fight the urge to do it. And if you have the time, the inclination, and the and the gumption, go and start looking at the thing, stuff yourself and talking to people who interest you and talk, you know, read somebody's book and contact them and ask them intelligent questions. They will answer you, you know? When I started doing the magazine, I was like, I wonder if I can talk to these people. Not one person ever turned me down for an interview. Not one. Wow, cool. I, I, I wish I could say that. To, I was able to talk to. Yeah, we have a few people here we'd like to see in the PowerCast, but they have excuses. Well, well then, too bad. <laughs> and they start with Whitley Strieber. He agreed to come on the show several times, oh, Greg. Several you times, might know yeah. this. And each time he found a way not to come on. Well, he's just a flaky artist guy, I guess. Mm. I'd like to interview him, too, but I've never really thought to, you know, I've asked him a couple of times. He's like, oh, well, I don't do interviews or whatever. It's like, okay. I did the same with Art Bell. He's like, no, I don't do interviews. And I said, okay, well, maybe I'll ask you, I'll, whoever I talk to, I like, maybe you'll feel better, you know, different about it in a couple of years. I don't know. And they they either say maybe, or they say probably not. But then two or three or four years later, I bug them again. Who knows? They might say yes. And if they don't, you know, so what? At least I tried. And I would, you know, Strieber would be a great get to, to, to get on oh, any yeah. new show because I've got all kinds of questions I want to ask him. And they have nothing to do with thinking that he's crazy or, or he's a charlatan or anything like that. I don't care about that. In fact, I don't care, you know, when people say, the, you know, certain people, they don't like them or whatever. I, I'm interested in people's ideas. I'm interested in their theories. and I'm interested in different thinking, which is why I like Whitley Strieber and I had from the beginning. I, I don't know what he's doing now, really, but based on his communion books and, you know, uh, Majestic and things like that. Majestic is my favorite Whitley Strieber book. But based on all these books it's obvious that there's so much more going on with him and the subject than aliens coming from other planets in fact i don't think he even really talks about that that much at all yeah. no he doesn't he looks he at it as an interaction between him and some other intelligence for some inscrutable reason which fascinates me i think that's probably close to my, probably what's going on <laughs> and that's just his viewpoint of it but he has described it in a way nobody else has whatever you think of him whether you think he's lying or crazy or whatever the the, the 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 idea fascinates me not the not the value judgment on it well yeah good point um you know you you there's just no arguing the fact that the cover of communion has had tremendous tremendous influence in the pop culture collective vision and view and acceptance of a particular archetype of the the large almond headed you know almond eyed uh big-headed gray alien yeah. even though it's kind of brown i think actually <laughs> yeah. but but that image uh you, you see it everywhere now uh and yeah. prior to whitley's book it was not a common image that you were uh, exposed to yeah but after communion boy in 1987 yeah. that really that just created this huge uh impact within the collective unconscious i think even yeah, and I think that a lot of people said, you know, that it had some kind of weird experience that that's what that is. I don't know if it's because it's a direct a direct memory thinking that's what happened to me and more like a bunch of people saying that looks like a good focus for what I think happened to me. And not thinking that that's, you know, they're trying to focus their anxieties and whatever happened to them on that image. Um, because that's what the, that's what happened, but because that image encapsulated what they were thinking and how they felt about it on some unspoken um, subconscious level. <laughs> in, in my case, I you know I was think I was thinking back to my own experience when I was seven. It's like, well, what I saw didn't look like that. 
<laughs> so I was kind of kind of different in that regard. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because probably a lot of people saw a lot of different things if they had those kind of experiences, and then suddenly it all collapsed into that. that right. Well, that again, getting back to Albert Rosales and his yeah. work. I mean, you go through through those reports. That, uh, I mean, he's done an incredible job of documenting claims of of you know contact with with some other type beings, and the, I mean, they run the gamut. I mean, if all these different alien types are visiting this planet, this must be like Grand Central Station for yeah. some sort of monitoring program uh, that's <laughs> multi multicultural uh, and multi uh, extraplanetary. Yeah. And does that sound like thousands or hundreds or whatever, thousands of different beings visiting the planet from other planets? Or does it sound like the variety of people reporting them has probably a lot to do with it? I would go with the latter. Yeah, we we create the details. We're given a sketch and we color in the details, basically. Yeah, and in, unfortunately, if you're talking about abduction research, getting back to that, they've already got they've already got the sketch there for you. Yeah, they've built it up over many years talking to many people, but it's it, it became codified. Yeah, Whether exactly. They were try, you know, I'm I'm sure they were sincere about helping people, maybe uh, in, in some way, it's either completely or in some way or whatever. I have no idea, but. Um, I, I still I like the Villa Boas case with the blonde-haired uh, yeah. alien uh, girl with the eyes that were too wide uh, apart that grunted like an animal. Yes, I, I think she had blood red hair. Blood red hair. Ooh, a redhead. Yeah. Oh wow! My wife has red hair. Did I tell you that? Uh oh. No, she's not one of those. We have yeah. Greg Bishop with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Independently leading the way for the nation. Compelling talk for every political persuasion. We are GCN. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home-cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay 4-in-1 Smart Organic Cooker. Unglazed Zisha Clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins, and minerals for your good help. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. On Facebook, on the news, and in conversations with friends, we're bombarded every day with advice on how to be healthier, from gluten-free and non-GMO diets to how much exercise and sleep the body needs. But how much have you heard about alkalizing the body? AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are a holistic and natural way to get your body's pH levels back in balance. Just a few drops in water will help your body rid itself of harmful waste. And even the healthiest of diets can be complemented with your daily use of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Who isn't looking for more vibrance, vigor, and energy? Now buy two bottles of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops and get $10 off your order. Visit AlkaVision.com or call 800-518-7615. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds. Open the door to greater health, vitality, and zest for life. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health. Call 800-518-7615 or head to AlkaVision.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Of course, if Barbara comes over now and wonders, why are they talking about me? <laughs> are they saying something nice? Yes. <clears throat> All right, we haven't figured out what this is yet, but this is the Paracast with Greg Bishop. We have lots of questions from listeners, and I really don't want to not answer them. So, Chris, would you continue? Okay, here's one from uh, another one from SRL, and he's wondering about the documentary Mirage Men, which was released in March of 2014. 
And you were listed as acting as film consultant. Yeah. We would like to ask you, Greg, what was it like to corroborate with Mark Pilkington and John Lumber? It was fun because what they did was they flew me out to New Mexico and had me talk about the book. And I like New Mexico anyway. So um, they had me out there. They had me driving around. They shot video of me. And it's like, you know, people and they didn't edit me out like every other <laughs> show I've ever been shot, had video shot of me for. <laughs> And as far as I could tell, they were pretty open minded about what I would say and what was being presented. I had disagreements with them about certain things. But in general, when I look at the, the film, I think it looks professional and it, it makes its point very well. And it's exceedingly professionally done, con considering all the constraints they had on the money, time, all that. Having uh, watched the film myself, um and uh, finally getting a chance to see Richard Doty on film for the first time. Yeah, that was another one. It's the only time I think he's ever agreed to be on camera. Yeah. Well, well what, what did you think of, of the way that his particular involvement was utilized? And did you really uh, believe him? Uh, do you think he was being upfront and honest um, for someone that's an admitted <laughs> disinformation agent? Mm, as honest as I, he thought he could be. I don't know. If I, you know. I can't check up on what, everything he says. I just can't. No, nobody really can. Yeah, nobody it's can. But what was your what was your gut gut reaction to him? My gut reaction is he's going to tell you what he feels like saying at the time, and if you're lucky and careful, some of it will be valuable to you. Do you think then that he's just playing games in large I think part? He, yeah, I think he likes to play games. But the thing is, you have to enter it knowing that you're not the powerful party in that in that interchange. You have to enter into the game with him. And by the way you, you know, it, I found this with a lot of intelligence people, and Doty is a little different, but by the way you act, the questions you ask, carry yourself, how you get there on time, that's a really important one. People wouldn't really think that. If you're late, that's immediately huge strike against you yeah. to an appointment with anybody, any intelligence person or anybody, anybody that was, you know. Uh, involved in some kind of government work. They, they'd much rather you have been sitting there for a half hour waiting for them. Yeah. <laughs> That's a no, power they, play. They, they, That's a power play, of course. Yeah. No, there's no power play whatsoever. If you were there on time, if I got there early, they would show up on the second. So I learned to just show up at right at the exact time. And I would like call up the time and make sure I had it right and that my watch was synchronized and all that. It was really crazy. But the thing is, I found that if you did that, there was a respect there and you already started out on a good foot. And Doty was not much different. And the thing is that he, you know, uh, Moore had called Doty and said um, that I was OK. Excuse to me. We want to say this for those who are wondering who's Moore. That's yeah, William Moore. Yeah. Had called Doty and said I was OK to talk to and that he, you know, he didn't have to feel any problem or pressure or, or threat from me. And we proceeded, proceeded on that basis. Yes, he did tell me a few things that were I knew to pretty much be untrue, especially on, you know, after I went back and looked at them. But I don't care. I, I really don't. People have well, this. Well, really yeah, that leads me to another question here from Steve C. If Bill Moore came up to you and admitted to you that he had been part of creating the Majestic 12 documents, how would you feel about him considering that you have on more than a few occasions defended him on this accusation from others in the UFO field? Would you tell him to keep it to himself or would you advise him how he should make this information public? If he told me he would want to make the information public and I would repeat it. And if he told me not to, I don't know what I would do. I might well, not talk you, to him anymore. You don't think he had in, a hand in him and Shender had a hand in creating those documents, the original I'm MJ-12 I'm sure document. no. Okay. All right. So who do you think did it? Um, Who do you think did the MJ-12 documents, if not Moore and Chandra? Somebody in the uh, related to the group um, that the guy Falcon was ahead of um, was probably contracted to write them. That that's the only thing I can think that that, that actually happened, and it's not because Moore told me that or suggested it. That's just my guess. And then Moore. Um, <laughs> Got them, and I think he did think that there was there there they were real for quite a while. He doesn't now. I mean, for whatever people think about that, um, and I don't think Doty had anything to do with it, and I don't think Moore had anything to do with it. I think somebody else did, and they wanted to see how people would react 
who would come calling, who was interested in the document, what happened when it was released into the public. They wanted to see a lot of things. And I don't think a lot, I don't think all of it had to do with UFOs. Um, it had more to do with what people thought of them and reacted to them and, and how they, how those kinds of right. um, pieces of information flowed through the UFO community and people who were interested in the UFO community that didn't care about UFOs. And there's, there were a few of those. Yeah, good meaning, point. Meaning foreign nationals who were, ed, you know, vacuuming up UFO information because there was occasionally some national security stuff in it. And compromising uh, groups and and doing counterintelligence. Uh, it, it was it could have been a really well thought out, extremely masterful counterintelligence uh, uh, effort. Yeah, and it might have been really important in the first few months before they told anybody about it. Way more important who knew about it and who was talking about it than it was afterwards when they publicly released it. No. Oh. Because Timothy Good, I think, got a copy of it too, and they 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 said that uh, they better release it or talk to or say something about it because Timothy Good was going to. It's his fault. <laughs> no, I don't think it's his fault. I just think he was used as leverage. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, a lot of people forget that, that Timothy Good was involved from, from the get-go. Yeah, I mean, he got sent the same stuff. I don't know. I can't remember if he got sent in the same format, like in the film or anything like that. But it, he had copies of it virtually, I think, the same time that Moore and Chandray did. Or maybe a little bit after. I'm not sure. But um, eventually, I, I guess they wanted them. Whoever made that stuff up wanted it released out into the public to see what would happen. So what do you think about people who still believe it, like a Stanton Friedman? And we're going to have to break in about two minutes, but let's just get that started. What do I think of it? I mean, it's like they, they can go ahead and keep thinking about it fine. I'm not going to argue with them. It's useless. It's, it's useless arguing with anybody that has made up their mind about something. It's just completely useless and a waste of time. Reminds I, me of last week's episode, The Paracast. Yes. <laughs> and you didn't listen to it, but you get the tenor of the Yes, of exactly. Thing. Sure. You, you can, a fundamentalist thinker is, is going to react in the same way of, uh, on just about anything. But yeah, like I said, I don't care if people still believe it. Too bad. That's that's their problem. And if they want to discuss it with me, too bad. I mean, it's like I don't want to discuss pro or con or anything. In fact, I was on a show about a month ago and the guy said, you know, what can we talk about? And I said, well, you know what? I don't want to talk. I don't want to answer any more questions about Bill Moore or stick up for him anymore. I'm kind of sick of it. I, I I did discuss it now, and it's fine. It's just that I kept hearing the same. This I start to realize why Bill Morse and other people just stop with the UFO thing because they kind of get tired of answering the same question. Yeah, and really. People oh my God. Say things that you never said. Right. Like, why did you say this? I never said that. Oh yes, you did. It's like really show me where you said. It. I remember you saying it. Well, that's not showing me where I said it. Well, they have me saying things. They have Chris saying things. I think anytime you say anything in public. Somebody will insist you said something you didn't say, or they'll take what you said out of context. Oh, that happens all the time. And, you know, it's like it, it, after a while, you just you get a thicker skin or you yeah. stop. I've been pretty lucky, actually. Uh, I, I can't even remember an instance where somebody accused me of saying something. Uh, that I didn't. I'm... Well, we'll start a rumor for you, Chris. Let's do it that <laughs> well, way. I'm, I'm really careful not only of what I say, but how I say it and in what context I say it. So I take it even, you know, several steps further. Well, I know on one show, yeah. you said something about a certain abductee. That abductee said that I said it, not you. But that's another story. Anyway, I must be really good at it if they blamed you. <laughs> <laughs> With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. Ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, tell you what, neighbors, head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two. A2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners. 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7, 365 days a year to answer any of your questions. 
Now, to get the discount, use the coupon code GENE when you check out. Have you ever felt like the United States government knows way too much about your financial affairs? I continue to hear stories about property seizures, frozen bank accounts, confiscation of stocks and bonds. It makes me wonder if the U.S. citizen will ever again have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, with the Drug and Money Laundering Act, the IRS Revenue Ruling 6045 of 1984, and the Trading with the Enemy Act and Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order of 1933, some precious metal holdings are subject to government intervention. For this reason, Midas Resources has prepared a report explaining the boundaries of trading precious metals privately. Whether if you have any intention of trading with Midas Resources or not, I have instructed my representatives to give this report out free. Call for your free copy at 1-800-686-2237. When investing, always proceed with caution. Again, call 1-800-686-2237. Exercise your legal right to trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Yeah? Did you want to see me, sir? Well, I did, but now that I do, I'm not so sure. Sir? Johnson, I got a mission for you that could change your life. Oh, good, sir. It involves traveling halfway around the world without so much as half a clue of where you're going and what you're going to do when you get there. Situation normal, sir? Uh-huh. Well, I'll be leading this mission, Johnson, so I'll be telling you what to do. You, sir? That's right, Johnson, and I say first things first. Oh, good plan, sir. And what I say is first is food. Always remember that, Johnson. Food is a big deal. Sir, my brother-in-law can guess a really good deal on some surplus MREs. Johnson, if you've got half a brain and that empty head of yours, you'll Call the freeze-dry guy like I did. That food is better for you. It rehydrates faster, and it's good, Johnson. And it keeps for up to 30 years. Will we be gone that long, sir? I hope not. Now get your supplies organized and meet me down to the pier at dawn on Sunday. We sail at sunrise. Yes, sir. This adventure is brought to you by the freeze-dry guy. Call 866-404-3663 or visit freezedryguy.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. You see what happens here. I get blamed for everything. I did everything. All I did was get up this morning, and at the appointed time, I turned on the mixer, turned on Skype, set up the mic, and here we are with Greg Bishop. Sometimes people don't get my humor. I mean, that happens all the time. Well, then that's your problem, sir. (laughs) I don't know. If Chris thinks it's funny, it sounds like it's their problem. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Unless you're trying to be a stand-up comedian, then it is your problem. (laughs) <laughs> well, I've been working on a stand-up routine for years. I mean, I, I tried one of my jokes on Kevin Randall, and he was not happy. <laughs> I don't want to hear that one again. I, I won't. I won't. I won't bore you with it. Okay. Well, all right. So you have a stand-up routine. Give us a joke. Tell uh, us a joke, it, sir. It, no, no, I, I don't want to I bore you now. I, I want to get back to some of our listener questions, and here, here's an important one. And this comes from Toxic Surf, and he rarely, or she rarely, comes out of the woodwork. I mean, we're talking someone that's been a member of the Paracast forums for almost five years. And the question is, when are you going to post the year-end Zorgi Award podcast? I had planned on listening live, but my gal had different plans. Uh, I don't know. I'm working on it right now, probably within a week or two. There you go, Toxic Surf. All right. It's just that I, you know, I have these shows, and I want to make sure, one, that they're, they sound good. 
Two, that, you know, there's not this big areas of dead space in between. And three, and probably most importantly, I don't sound stupid. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, boy, here at the Paracast, I, I really have to be careful because Gene leaves everything in situ. Everything's intact. People may not know this, but when after I do the show, I listen to basically the entire show again just to see if there's anything in there that I've like, because it's permanent. It's out there forever after, after I post it. And if there's something in there I didn't want to say or, you know, I that was wrong or whatever, I'd like a chance to 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 change, you know, get it out of there. I don't change anything. I don't go in and start adding things. I never do that. But I'm also I'm always taking things out, especially ums, uhs. Sometimes we'll talk about something irrelevant that I think is not very interesting. If it's irrelevant and funny or interesting, I'll leave it in there. But if not, I'll take it out. And that's why a lot of these things take a while, because I, do, I don't sit there and self-edit while we're doing the shows. I just We just go. In fact, if I know the person, I don't even have a set of questions. But if it's a new person, like or somebody that's very smart and, and, and intimidating to me, like Dean Radin, I have a list of questions. Oh, I yeah. I have oh, 20 boy. questions. And we never get through all of them, but I have a list there ready to go. But if I'm talking to you know you, Chris, or or Paul, or or Nick Redfern, or or Adam Go Rightly, or you know any of the, Walt or any of the normal people I have on the show a lot, I almost never have a list of stuff to talk about. I, I don't make a list. I just come in and sometimes I talk to them a little bit beforehand and say we're going to talk about these few things. I guess okay, whatever, because they're friends of mine, and I you know I'm pretty comfortable with what we're going to talk about. And wherever the conversation may lead, you know, kind of like this. Where I don't even know if we're on topic, but I, I like answering the questions. <laughs> I don't even know if we have a topic. But I don't think we have a topic. That's great. That's I love it. That. Don't worry. We'll think of a topic. You see, what I do in terms of post-production, and Chris knows this, is I listen to the show one more time. Because one thing is I have to refine the timings for the network. Everything has to be submitted within a tenth of a second. So mm -hmm. I clean it up a little bit. Yeah. So a 10-minute segment takes me 15 minutes to clean it up. And I don't claim to be the greatest audio editor, but what I do is I take out a few of the errs and whatever, a yeah. few of the stutters. Not completely because I want it to be natural. Yeah. But I clean it up and I send it out and that's it for posterity for yeah. the rest of time. There's been a few times where you've left some, left some things in there that uh, came back and kind of bit us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was deliberate, sir. My personality comes out in the way I edit the thing. It, it, it is edited to the way I think of things, my personality, and what I find interesting and entertaining. If I don't find it interesting and entertaining, it's not going to be in there. Okay, that's understandable. It'll take me anywhere from, it's a two-hour show to two and a half hours, depending. And it'll take me anywhere from three or four to maybe sometimes more than that depending on how the show was to do the to do the uh, you know editing filtering level changing you know i don't want any of the levels to be up and down sometimes i'm really quiet and the person that's talking is really loud or vice versa and i have right. to go through the entire show it's happened a couple times and adjust the levels so we're at the same level yeah i cheat i use an application called levelator which is kind of an automatic normalizer that's oh, well, really I good use that, yes well it compresses and, and limits uh transient you know yeah spikes and that sort of thing well, after a couple times of having that happen i i've watched the levels very carefully throughout the show so i haven't yeah. really haven't had to do that for a while yeah gene does his little dance on his mixer there every show i've seen him do it yeah i'm, I'm like talking to the person and one eye is over there at the the vu meter making sure it's not going you know that when we when i and the guests talk or somebody on the phone or whatever it's at the same level. And I will adjust it very quickly if it's not. I'm sure Gene does the same thing. Yeah. Well, you know, I learned that skill in radio school yeah. where they told me if the station over modulates, the FCC is going to cite you. And that, of course, doesn't happen. Never <laughs> happened in real life. But they said, this is what's going to happen. So you have to really watch the levels. And I'll tell you one time where I really had an adventure. This was on a Sunday morning. I'm working at a small radio station in Alabama. And we have this local church group come in there. And the sermon starts. They're doing it live. There are three or four of them. And I guess they bring some musical instruments and everything. So they come in there. And the first thing the manager says, before they start, get the money for the one hour they're buying. But they're a church. Can't you trust a church? Get the money. <laughs> okay, so we take the money. We stick it somewhere, wherever the manager told us. 
And now I'm there with my first wife, Geneva, and we're just listening and I'm watching the levels and I turn them up because he's speaking very softly. And then his voice gets louder. And soon he is screaming, and you don't need the radio station. It's a small town. Just <laughs> open the door. <laughs> and I've got the level, you know, compensating so it doesn't overmodulate. And then he talks about the sinners. And he looks at us sitting there, riding the levels with my wife sitting next to me. And then he speaks in tongues. He speaks in tongues. I'm telling you the truth here. The first and only time I've heard somebody speak live in tongues. No, nothing like a little little glossolalia to wake your ass up. It's a Sunday morning. I, you know, was half asleep, just relaxing, just slumming, and suddenly. But, but Gene, you in Alabama, it's just, it's like oil and water in my brain. I just can't wrap my head around that. That's right. Alabama. <laughs> W-P-I-D. Piedmont, Alabama, 1280 AM. It's still there. It's called Easy 1280. I just looked it up. Oh, there's just, I don't know. There's just something wrong about that. It's just wrong. Well, my background is uh, audio editing and post-production, and uh, I didn't go to school for it, but I've- Yeah, but you, for many you're years, professional. But, yeah, it's, it's just drilled into my head the way things should be with audio. So that's right. it just, it follows what I'm doing this show. Yeah, and me too, actually. Uh, thank God Gene does most of the heavy lifting in the audio technical uh, <laughs> division of the uh, <clears throat> corporation. Let's do our break here, and then we can talk about it. With Gene and Chris and Greg Bishop, you're in the Paracast. You're listening to GCN, proudly sponsored by UnseenNow.com. Lock down your digital life at UnseenNow.com. This is GCN. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com we live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Did you go to guns80.com and get your AR-15 yet? I took my buddy Mark out to lunch the other day to thank him for turning me on to guns80.com, and suddenly our old pal Dan showed up and joined us. Of course, Mark immediately started selling him on the great deals at guns80.com and told him how you can buy a brand new rifle at a great price, keep your privacy, and how it can be delivered right to your front door, and that there was no visit to a gun dealer involved, there are no government papers to fill out. Dan was such an easy sell. He just pulled out his iPhone right there and went to guns80.com and ordered his ghost AR. Wow. You can call guns80.com right now. Their number is 844-2-GUNS-80. That's 844-248-6780. By the way, demand they pay market commission, okay? Call guns80.com at 844-2-GUNS-80 and demand they pay mark, please. 
he deserves a commission. Go to 844-2-GUNS-80 and get your ghost AR-15 on the web at guns80.com. Go now. Registered pharmacist Ben Fuchs ensures he gets the best use of his mineral supplements by using Longevity's Ultimate Enzymes. If you start a nutritional supplement program and you find that you get loose stools more than you get any benefits from the supplements, there's a good chance that you're not absorbing the minerals. Now, here's the thing about minerals and mineral absorption. You need to have a functioning fat system. You need to have functioning bile. You need to have a well-functioning liver and a well-functioning gallbladder in order to get the benefits from nutritional supplements with minerals. It's very common that... As we get older, we don't absorb fats, we don't utilize fats, and then you won't be utilizing or absorbing minerals either. I would be getting on the ultimate enzymes from Longevity. I'd be making sure I was taking them with all my meals. To get optimal use of your nutritional supplements, order Ultimate Enzymes from Longevity by calling 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or on the web at brightsidebed.com. That's brightsidebed.com. Order today. Hi, this is Nick Pope. You're listening to the Paracast. We have Greg Bishop here, and it's just a blast. He comes in, we have no idea what we're going to talk about, and something starts. And now I'm trying to remember my first job in radio. (laughs) WPID, Piedmont, Alabama. My first job in radio. You know, maybe they should carry the Paracast. You know, really. What do you think? Yeah, so right said, after the glass Elliot spouting theory. preacher. That would be perfect. That was Chapman's Chapel, by the way. I don't know if they're still there or not. Sounds like a fun after it's a fun Sunday morning, actually. Um hmm. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. Good day? No, Paul Harvey would say the rest of the story. Here's the rest of the story. They did their thing. Following weekend, I was sitting there again, waiting for this to resume. They never came back. Skip town, huh? I guess. Or maybe they didn't have their $40 for the hour or whatever it cost. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're talking about money and a small radio station many, 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 many years ago. Yeah. Get the money first. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Any more questions from people? I do. I, I've got a good one here from SRL, actually, Greg. Survival Research Laboratories? Um, I'm not sure uh, about that. Uh, <laughs> when but, I hear that, hey, it like, sounds good. Yeah. We should have him post on the on the forum what SRL stands for. It's probably Steve R. Lewis or something. Yes. But in the immense effort of extracting oneself from the seemingly hopeless morass commonly referred to as ufology, quote-unquote, out-of-the-box thinkers have been suggested in providing meaningful traction. In the spirit of said traction, I would like to ask if there has been any consideration given to the pennings of either Jeffrey Cripple or Bernardo Castrup. I'm not even familiar with those two names. If not, and outside of the present company, who else may be suggested as plausible? Who's Jeffrey Cripple and Bernardo Castrup, Greg? Uh, Bernardo, I haven't heard of. Cripple, I have. But I haven't read any of his stuff. The the the, the out of the box thinking that that I've mentioned before, and I always go back to, of course, are you know Keel and Valet. And then there's others like Jim Brandon's stuff, the couple of books he wrote, uh, Rebirth of Pan and Weird America. Um, um, oh, who was the guy that wrote the? Uh, oh man, I can see the cover, but I can't think of it. Um, and such a strange thing as um, uh, Unconventional Fra- Flying Objects by Paul Hill. Read that one. Very interesting. Um, uh, any Streber stuff. Uh, who, who, who else is very influential? Uh, Robert Anton Wilson. We've, I've talked about him on my show. Right. And that's just a, you know, a way of looking, in, about th- looking at things and thinking about them. Yeah. Um, uh, Greg Little. His couple of books, uh, People of the Web. And what was the other one? Do either of you remember the other net title? Mm, no, I'm not. I haven't really read Little Stuff, but um, several people that I respect and uh, think highly of him. Yeah. Uh, Mac Tony's book, The Crypto Terrestrials. That, that yeah. one I thought was, you know, apart from him being a friend of mine, I thought that. And he was, you know, we've had, you know, talked about him on the show, uh, on your show quite a bit. Right. Uh, that's another one. 
Um, Tom Bearden is one that I, I always found fascinating. Some of his stuff is pretty out there, but but really smart, very, very smart and up to speed. Yeah, and I've, I'm not standing next to my bookshelf, and there's there's many, many, many more. Um, but these are not names you normally hear associated with you. Yeah, and Ame Michel, uh, another yeah. one, one of Valet's uh, influences. Yeah. But he wrote some books back in the 1950s. Yeah, yeah UFO and straight line, straight line, line mystery. Classic. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, uh, Charles Ford, I think anybody who's really looking to get a sense of the how bewildering <laughs> all these subjects can be, there's no better place to start than uh, the three books of Charles Ford, which are, of course, Wild Towns, um, Low, and uh, what, The Damned? Book of the Damned. Book of the Damned, yeah. Very, very, very uh, <laughs> highly recommended. Colin Wilson's another one. Yes, yes, quite, quite so. Very good stuff. Uh, I, I could come up with with some other names as well. Uh, Michael Talbot. Uh, That's the what I was trying to think universe. Of. Michael Talbot. Yeah. Extremely uh, good. Uh, Terrence McKenna, another just amazingly out of the box thinker. Just an incredible uh, insight and. Just an amazing out of the box thinker. Uh, I, I I can't recommend his work uh, <laughs> enough. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I, I um, who else? Uh, Gene. Uh, it, 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 except you know, forget Keo. <laughs> uh, who would you uh, suggest as an out of the box thinker is a good person uh, to read? Well, the classic out of the box thinker was none other than John Keel. Right. Yeah. Greg mentioned Keel and Ballet uh, first off. I would go with them. I would go with those. Certainly, I would agree about the crypto terrestrials because the late Mac Tonys took us in directions that we hadn't really explored that much. And it was yep. so nice, but so sad because it was like a sketch of a much larger idea. And he didn't have yeah. the time to flesh it out. And unfortunately, I don't see other people really fleshing it out that much. And we talk about all these different people and authors, and and the thing is that a lot of them don't agree with each other, and they have all kinds of different ideas. And that's good. That's perfect. You know, it's nice to live in somebody's, you know, uh, headspace or their, 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 their theories for a while and take from them what you, you think is important or interesting. You don't have to buy it hook, line, and sinker. No. You don't even have to like any of it. But, but the point is to, to read things that are different and expose yourself to things that are different because – as we were talking about before, you know, that it, you will indirectly come to some of these ideas on your own just by absorbing all this information and to some kind of understanding of it. And it might, and it probably, if it's valuable, if it's valid and, 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 you know, and, and, uh, and you stick with it, it, it's, it will be your idea, you know, the, your, your, uh, way of looking at it. And it's, and there's a lot of ideas under there, as like I said, we talked about before, that are indirect and intuitional. And what am I saying? Intuitive, I'm sorry. Um, that you might not be able to get across to other people. But you've enriched yourself about the subject by exposing yourself to all these different um, points of view. I think somebody on um, uh, UFO Mystic one time just said, why don't we live in these points? One of the commenters said, it's, it'd be, it's fun to live in somebody's point of view for a while without buying into it. You don't have to buy into it. That's a problem a lot of people have. It's like, well, this is the person I follow and this is the idea that I have. Well, if you're talking about UFOs, that's the exact wrong <laughs> attitude yeah. to have because oh, boy, man. you're going to be wrong in so many ways. Yeah, yeah. you can't, you can't put all your chips uh, on one hand or... All your eggs in one basket. I mean, you should always read, research, and do investigations from a place of objectivity and not buying into any of it. You need to yeah. see what really kind of strikes you deeply at your core, how your in intuitive sense responds to certain information. Some stuff has a real ring to it. Other stuff, you're like, eh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But there, there is a core of information that will uh, be important for you if you allow yourself to be open and objective enough. Yeah, you have to uh, remember when you first started reading UFO books and your childlike wonder about it. Keep that. You know, it's really hard to keep that after a while. You get cynical and you, <laughs> jaded. You know, 
and jaded and all that. And yeah, we're all cynical and jaded. I know Gene is, and, and you are, Chris, and a lot of people listening, but you don't have to be. I'm I mean, cynical, he's jaded. Okay. But, um, you know, it, there's still part, like, you know, we'll, that, you know, the question that the, the listener asked, uh, the person in the forum, what kind of books? I mean, that suddenly we're like, oh, God, this person and that person, and, you know, and that excitement comes back. And I, you know, and... If you don't lose that, it's great. You'll just keep you'll you'll just keep looking and keep discussing and keep exploring. And that you know what isn't that what life's about? I guess that's why we're still here. Yeah. yeah. By the way, we have Greg exactly. Bishop, and we have one more segment, a few more questions from listeners to cover. We won't get to all of it. And I looked, and I noticed that the last time Greg Bishop was on the Paracast was 2012. That's wow. not right. We'll have to address that. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. Great minds think alike. The network for the independent-minded. The Genesis Communications Network. GCN. Attack of the Rockoids has been well-received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. We all have our own idea about what being safe and secure means. The door's locked, bills are paid, you've got a job that keeps the lights on, and a home to call your own. But what happens when Mother Nature throws a curveball? I am telling you, the tank cover. cover. Are you prepared to live without electricity or passable roads for weeks at a time? Do you even have a plan B? If you do, are you willing to bet your life on it? Children left with no homes. And no one's coming to help them. Help the first step towards self-reliance in the face of disaster is a visit to MyPatriotSupply.com. There you'll find the absolute best prices on storable foods, non-GMO seeds, emergency water filtration devices, and so much more. All orders over $49 qualify for free shipping in the lower 48 states. Call 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. And speak to one of our preparedness advisors today or visit us at mypatriotsupply.com remember before it's time to survive it's time to prepare worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks you need immudine for a healthy immune system why get sick and bother with products that just don't work for just a dollar a day immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late before you get sick or go to immudyne.com immudine.com or call 866-257-8668 Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. What good is a Big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey water filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters 
filters can last for five to ten years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Okay, this is a fast evening. Now, let me tell you, this is past my normal bedtime, okay? I don't listen to the all-night shows anymore. I used to when I was a kid. Never went to sleep. But, you know, as I get a little older, I get up earlier in the morning, and right now, I'm usually turned in, but I'm still awake. And I have to blame only one person for that. That's Greg Bishop. Oh, blame, blame Chris. Well, I always blame Chris, but, you know, he doesn't <laughs> yeah, like to be blamed. Really? Oh, man. It's good to have some company here in the blame department. <laughs> it's all right. It's only, it's, come on, Gene. It's not even 11 o'clock at night. I mean, you're doing good. You sound chipper. What, Gene? Do you get up at like, do you go to sleep at six at night and get up at three in the morning already? That sounds like my wife. No, I I get up about six thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> or as the shadow said, <laughs> yeah. Well, I shouldn't laugh. I'll probably be heading there in the next twenty or thirty years myself. Maybe even oh. sooner. Okay, here's here's a good question. Uh, again, this is from Burnt State, one of our premier posters. That why isn't that guy a moderator? Burnt State. I want him to be a moderator. Yeah, I think he should be. I mean, he's he's spends a lot of time on the forums and for a promotion. You, uh, he makes me think, and I love that. The posters on our forums that make me think are my favorite posters. And and here's a good one. This is a, a really good question. Oh, he's gonna Greg, step. if you had a chance to time travel to be a direct participant in a famous UFO case or sighting, which one would it be, and why? And what role would you like to play in the case? I can't think of any right now, but one flashes in my mind. The uh, Eagle River, uh, uh, Wisconsin, Joe Simonton pancake one. <laughs> You'd like to cook the pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> if it so happens- tell me about your pancakes. When you cook pancakes, do they have buckwheat in them? <laughs> I think, yeah, they, they said they were regular old bland buckwheat pancakes. I don't know. I mean, I get the kind of the suspicion that it was a hoax but if it wasn't i would love to i don't know how i would participate i guess i would have just liked to have been standing there with him with joe simonton i guess that that's one of them another one would be the um, can i have it with maple syrup yes uh, gotta have the maple syrup with the buckwheat pancakes maple even syrup. if et were to make them yeah maple syrup from cake for people that get that joke. Oh, um, that's too subtle. <laughs> oh. Um, and the other one that just comes to, that like springs to mind, I'm sure I'm forgetting so many great ones. Well, Rendlesham might be one, but is the um, the Papua New Guinea one, uh, Father William Gill. Oh, right. <laughs> Where he had the waving contest with the. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. That's a classic. And I would have liked to have been standing there and had a pair of binoculars. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the, the, those are two. Th- there's a couple I can think of right now. And maybe uh, sitting in sitting in the room when Whitley Struber gets visited and see what happens. Well, see if anything really happened. Yeah. Well, I, what my suspicion is, is that he's lying there basically in an altered state and, and, and either not moving or twitching a bit. And that's about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I like it. the twitching. That yeah. sounds curious. <laughs> yeah. Twitching. Yes. Okay, now, of course, Whitley Strieber will never come on because he said, Gene Steinberg said I was twitchy, and Greg <laughs> Bishop said I was twitching. Therefore, I will not come on that show. Well, then that's his loss. But it, it, I'm not saying this because most people are going to say, oh, because you think he imagined it all. It's like, no, that has nothing to do with it. I think that whatever happened to him at some level was quite real and was from an external source. I'm pretty sure of that. Now, past that, I don't know, you know, how it breaks down into what really happened, how much he confabulated himself or or whatever. But it would be really interesting to be in the room when that's happening or any abduction, really, just to see if something what the hell is going on. What about the hills? 
I All think right. that probably would have been interesting too, just to see what was going, you know, uh, was going on. I I have no idea what 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 I would have seen though. I I really don't. Most people would have said, "Well, you would have seen a ship and the thing came down and then they come out and stop them on the road." And I don't know if I would have seen that. I don't know if any but a third party observer would see that. And that's not to say that again that they made it up or it was a hoax or it was a misidentification or a fugue state or what i have no idea but a lot of the ufo cases that are reported to us if they have if they're more than just lights in the sky or a daylight disc or something like that some kind of interaction i get the feeling that if i was a third party observer observer of this i would not have the same report on it that the the, the witness did yeah I'm well, pretty sure, almost, almost certain of that. Yeah, it's almost guaranteed that you wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, and this is not a not a new idea either. That the just I think Valet came up with this. The proximity to whatever's going on, the closer you get to it, the more you get affected by it at the time, and more importantly later. Yeah, you know, uh, the proximity to whatever the phenomena is affects your perception of it. That answer the question? I can't even remember what the question was anymore. <laughs> well, that's all right. We'll make up a question to fit Most the answer. Stuff, okay, yeah, would you, would you, would you like be? to visit as a time traveler, and what role would you play? Yeah. I would always. I would like to be a observer that was looking at all these things from from maybe not even near the near the witnesses, like away from them, not near the group of witnesses, but off by myself at another vantage point. Right. An overview. An overview, yeah, with, yeah, with a right. pair of binoculars. Alternate view, anyway. Yeah. Well, what is it? This comes from Joey22, uh, Joey K22. And it has to be the last question, I think. Yeah, he's been a member for a long time. You pulled him out of the woodwork. Uh, he's <laughs> been five years and only asked 31 questions or had 31 messages on our forum. What is your theory on Bigfoot, Greg? And, and exactly what are people seeing when they claim to see a classic big, Bigfoot? Is it rational to theorize that Bigfoot is in an interdimensional travel? Travelers, since physical evidence eludes us? Yeah, I pretty much agree with that assessment. I don't think Bigfoot is a hairy hominid that lives in places where we can't find them. Yeah, Carl Schuker and Lauren Coleman, David Childress, Nick Redfern will probably disagree with you on that. Nick but, agrees with me. But Nick, Nick, Nick would agree, yeah. Yeah, as far as we can hammer definitions in in, in language, is that I think it is a, a paranormal entity which is physical at some times or has properties of being physical occasionally and it's kind of like ufos you know every yeah. time you see a video or something if it's not a hoax it's like why is it so far away or why is it well i don't know what people think of the patterson film but why is it always so indistinct yeah blob squatch yeah exactly and the funny thing is like ufo videos and films the closer it is the faker it looks <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, boy. He was in the Amazon. He had a sighting of of what he described as exactly like the famous George Adamski photograph, the three balls underneath. Yeah. He said it flew right over him, and and he said it looked hokier in hell, but it was real. Yeah. Before we get too hokey, we got to kind of wrap this up. Greg Bishop, please tell our listeners where they can find more of the things that you do or don't do, depending on your point of view. Until I write something else, which I'm kind of working on, the last remaining public thing that I do is, is uh, my radio show, Radio Mysterioso, which is on, if it is on, live on Sundays from 8 to 10 p.m. Pacific time at killradio.org, just how it's spelled. Or they can go to Radio Mysterioso, R-A-D-I-O-M-I-S-T-E-R-I-O-S-O, -S 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 spelled like it is in Spanish, uh, dot com. There are archive shows there. You can also subscribe to it on iTunes. They're done live. If you hear them live, it's probably the only time you're ever going to hear them that way because I will usually do a bit of editing, a little or a lot, but somewhere in the middle, usually. And all I have to say is usually what is said on the show and um, or, or when I'm doing an interview like I am with you guys. My in fact, he doesn't talk. He yeah. has an oath of silence, so he yeah. says nothing. Well, it's well, my not favorite show to be a guest on. Well, thank you, Chris. I, I mean that. I've said that many times. Let's do our wrap-up. You can find us on Twitter. We're known as the Paracast. Look for the Paracast on Twitter. Look for two separate Paracast fan clubs on Facebook. If we were to combine them, we'd have to kill one, and that's not going to happen. We don't like to kill anything. And also, we have that other special service called 
the Paracast Plus, plus.thepowercast.com, P-L-U-S dot thepowercast.com. Go there, subscribe, get an ad-free version of this radio show and the After the Paracast exclusive podcast only to Paracast Plus members. Visit Chris's site, OurStrangePlanet.com, OurStrangePlanet.com, just like it sounds. You can order his books there, get them autographed for the print versions. You can't really autograph the Kindle versions, but that's how it goes. Greg Bishop, thanks for joining us on the Paracast. Thanks very much, guys. I really enjoyed it. The Paracast. Featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.